Hello and welcome back to Real Analysis. And as always, first I want to thank all the nice people that support this channel on Steady or PayPal. In today's part 11, we will talk about the limit superior and the limit inferior. Indeed, both are very important concepts when you deal with sequences of real numbers. Therefore, let's immediately start with an example of such a sequence. Here, each sequence member AN is given by N. Now you know on the real number line, this sequence looks very simple. Obviously, this sequence is not convergent because it gets as large as you want. So what we could say here is that this sequence is divergent, but it is divergent to infinity. However, please note here, we use infinity as a symbol here, not as a number. More concretely, by definition, this should mean that for any constant I give you, we find an index capital N, such that for all indices afterwards, we are greater than this constant. In other words, the sequence exceeds any bound eventually. In a similar way, this definition works for a sequence that is not bounded from below, such that we can have the notion divergent to minus infinity. There, our inequalities are just reversed. However, please note, this sequence here is not divergent to minus infinity. Of course, only one of the two properties here can occur for a given sequence. Another thing you should remember is that we have a symbolic notation for both cases here. We just write that the limit of a n is equal to the symbol infinity or equal to the symbol minus infinity. So you see, using the symbols here makes it easier to talk about the properties of a sequence that is not convergent. Another thing we introduced for such sequences is the notion of accumulation values. For this example, you might have already seen, this sequence does not have any accumulation value, no cluster point at all. However, in the same symbolic way as here, we could say this sequence here clusters at infinity. Therefore, we define the improper accumulation value infinity. Namely, we have that for all sequences that are not bounded from above. And of course, in the same way, we cluster at minus infinity when the sequence is not bounded from below. Now, this is a very nice definition because it tells us, together with the bolzano weierstrass theorem, that any sequence that has no accumulation values has at least one improper one. And that's what we can use to be able to talk about the smallest or largest accumulation value we can have. For this, keep in mind that a given sequence AN could have many different accumulation values. Of course, we can visualize them on the number line as well, but now keep in mind, we could have finitely many or infinitely many. And maybe we also have an improper accumulation value, or even two, outside of the number line. Again, infinity and minus infinity are just symbols we put next to the number line. They are not numbers, but they are helpful for our whole description here. Simply because now it makes sense to talk about the largest accumulation value. It could be a normal one or an improper one. And the same holds for the lowest one. Both of them now get very special names. So here we have a definition that holds for any sequence of real numbers. And now we consider an element A. Either it's a real number or the symbol minus infinity or plus infinity. And now this A is called the limit superior of the sequence AN if it's the largest accumulation value. So there is no other accumulation value which is larger than A. Additionally for this, we have a common notation you might have already seen. We simply write lim sub n to infinity of a n. Okay, with this you now know one important symbol that is very often used in analysis. And then you might not be surprised that we can do a similar thing for the limit inferior. It's simply the smallest accumulation value the sequence can have, or it could also be an improper one. And then we use the notation lim inf. Okay, now you might ask, why exactly do we use these strange names and these notations here? Therefore, I would say we invest the next minutes to discuss this. So let's draw a graph for a given sequence. So we have the natural numbers on the x-axis and the real number line on the y-axis. In other words, the y-coordinates of the points gives us the sequence members a n. 
Therefore, you should see at this value here and at this value, we have two accumulation values. On the other hand, here you can see this point here gives us the largest value of the whole sequence. In other words, this is the supremum of AK, where K goes through all the natural numbers. However, now you might ask, what happens with the supremum when we ignore finitely many sequence members at the beginning? Therefore, here I just would write K is greater or equal than 1. And then when I look at K greater or equal than 2, nothing will change. We still have this point here as the largest value. However, if we go to 3, this value is no longer considered. Now we find a new largest value, which is here. Of course, it's not possible that the supremum would be now larger than before. Indeed, in this case, it's getting smaller. Moreover, now it stays the same at this value until we reach the next step, which is k is greater or equal than 9. This means that now we ignore all the points that are left on this side, and then the largest value here is this one. Okay, and now you might already see, we get even smaller when we increase the number here even more. For example, we can choose 11 and then we find this value here. And then the supremum stays at this level, no matter how big this number here is. And please recall, we already know this value here is the largest accumulation value. Therefore, by definition, this is the limit superior. Or in summary, we now have learned that the limit superior describes what happens with the supremum when we cut off more and more at the beginning of the sequence. In this sense, we have the following fact. The limb sub of a sequence is related to the sequence given by the supremum where n, the index, is the cutoff. So we have k is greater or equal than n. So this is a well-defined sequence with index n. The only strange thing that can happen here is that all the sequence members here are the symbol infinity. However, with the exception of this case, we get a well-defined sequence of real numbers where we already know this sequence is monotonically decreasing. And then we look at the limit of this sequence when n goes to infinity. And now one can show this is exactly the largest accumulation value, therefore our limit superior. Here, please keep in mind, on both sides, infinity and minus infinity as symbols are possible. Also, I can tell you, often this one is used for the definition of the limit superior. However, still there, it's a good exercise to show the relation between the accumulation values then. Okay, maybe not so surprising, we have a similar result for the limit inferior. There, we just observe what happens with the infimum when we cut off finitely many sequence members at the beginning. And what we get is a sequence with index n, which is monotonically increasing. However, also here, minus infinity and infinity as symbols are possible on both sides. Okay, then I would say, examples and more properties of the limit superior and limit inferior we can discuss in the next video. Therefore, I hope I see you there and have a nice day. Bye!